obviously social media came in as well where you can literally hype anything. So I believe we, we, we are in a world, first of, all, first of all, even just put blockchain apart, we're in a world where if you're not hyped, you're nothing. This is The Mooncast. Space Cowboy. So, man, <laughs> I don't even know where to start, man. It's just it's just really, really good to talk to you, man. I'm smiling so hard right now. So I know the last time I spoke with you and your team, it was last year, man. So I know a lot has happened since then, man. So um, could you start with just maybe introducing yourself and who you are and um, what you're about? Oh, yeah, cool. Um, so my name is Michael. Um, that's my real legit name, by the way. My name is Michael. And, um, I live in the UK, but I work in Dublin as well. That's in Ireland. Um, mm-hmm. At the moment, I'm in, I'm in Dublin at the moment, but um, I'm always back and forth between the UK and Ireland. Um, I'm about 33 years old. I am turned 33 actually in March. And um, I've sort of been about the crypto space for probably about five six years now and um i do work with nft books just like you know obviously um we 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 sold the first people that um are trying to build a library a free library because i don't want to sort of infuse that into a platform a free library but also a self-publishing platform for all um authors and readers and that sort of thing and i'm sure we're going to get into that as we sort of go yeah, absolutely. How long have you been working with NFT books for? Um, I've, I've been about since inception, actually. I've been about since 2001. So I've been about for, for a bit of time since we, we sort of started. Yeah, amazing, man. So you've seen it from basically kind of like the beginning stages of, you know, the development and everything. And how many authors are, are self-publishing now from where it started to where it is now? Like how many are, are on the platform active? Yeah, um, um, obviously, um, I've seen it from 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 inception. Yeah, like I said, since we launched in two thousand and one, and um, we we started out, um, we started out on on Binance because obviously at that time, um, B and B was sort of this chain that had a lot of people and a lot of investors and that sort of thing. So mm-hmm. we obviously um we were more inclined to be than Binance, and um, we do appreciate what well, obviously Binance brought to the table. We got a lot of investors through building on B and B, but um. Obviously, um, eventually we had to sort of move on, and we moved into Polygon. But not not only because we wanted to move on, but because, like you know yourself, um, Polygon is such a brilliant um, blockchain as well, very scalable, yeah. very cheap, and very dependable. And, and the core that we had um, was because what we're building. I mean, what we have is a very very massive code, and um, we worked it out and realized um, we were better off. Um, and Polygon, and um, we moved over to Polygon, and we we uh, that's what we call home at the moment. But back to what you asked, yeah, we have actually about maybe one hundred and eighty authors at the moment. Nice. But um, we've been onboarding authors all the time, and um, obviously, um, like you know yourself, in, in the crypto space, there's a lot of fraud. Sometimes we've um, we've got people that actually are not. Um, the legit owners of certain books and certain um, um, articles they want to put on our platform, and we've obviously um, vetted them and we didn't authorize them to join the platform. But at the moment, we've got about one about 165 authors, and obviously we have um, we have um, what what should I call them? We have partners. We have um, Square. We have partners like Square, Square, Square Put on Boats. That's a publishing company that comes with a whole load of um, of authors underneath the belt. And um, we have we have grown to um, to now we, we we can publish in about three hundred and twenty four titles, about seven languages, and um, about. 11 different genres so um we're growing we're, we're not rushing anything we're not in the crypto space but we we, we took a different route because we're a company as well we, we're trying to do things the right way we we don't want anything to sort of like 
um, um, backlash in us at any point. So we're trying to do everything the right way as a company, even though we're built on the blockchain. Yeah, can you, if you could talk to me about that vetting process that you guys orchestrate to be able to say, okay, this author is legit. He is the one that published the book and this book is unique to him. And uh, can you just walk me through that process, how that works? Yeah, um, so I, I can't really get a deep in that, but obviously I'll, I'll take you through the process that we have to go through. Because obviously, you know, um, once something goes into the blockchain, sometimes not even the, not even the blockchain, the internet can be so hard to to remove that foot from, that um, footprint, basically. Mm -hmm. But um, obviously, um, when people come into that pub, um, that own this book or that own this article and that sort of thing, and um, first of all, you have to get your ID, your identity, and where you're from, and all that sort of thing. So, in case you do give us an article, a book that does not belong to you, because we're companies, well, we, we we can sue you in case of. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You make money off someone someone else's article or publishment or a book or anything like that. We can be you can be liable to be sued because, like I told you, we operate as a company and we, we don't sort of take chances when it comes to this whole thing. But um, the vetting process, like you asked, is really about your IDs, and we would take obviously we would look at you. We take like visual, um, we do a video call basically to to know exactly who you are, if you watch the IDs that you gave us. And obviously we try to take um, government issued IDs as well. Mm -hmm. And these these are all things that we discuss about with the authors before. And they know we're going to be taking that just in case, I mean, for, for legal reasons. Do you think there's going to be a way in which you could streamline that process, maybe using artificial intelligence or something of the sorts to where you could kind of remove the human and trust era or and then just kind of make it more trustless of course um we we, we are working process like like you know i mean when, when we started out um ai was not a thing at all like four years ago it wasn't a thing at all it was it was all about nfts and, and gaming and that sort of thing into the blockchain and mm -hmm. obviously now like you know yourself like you said um ai is can and you can solve um um raise all these issues all these problems you can fast and you can quicken all um, the onboarding process and the vetting process so yeah we we are we are, we are always inventing on the back and we are always looking ways to improve the platform and streamline everything and make it quicker and easier so yeah that's that is something we, we're looking at eventually to streamline onboarding and obviously that will make the whole work easy yeah. Do, do you worry about the sort of decentralization ethos, so to speak? And do, do you worry also about that it takes because it's taking maybe probably it's more lethargic, that process that it's maybe making a lot of authors more hesitant as opposed to just going on the platform and uploading their book through a more streamlined process? Do you guys worry about these type of things or? Yeah, at the moment, they, obviously they can't do that. Um, but we, we yeah. are working in the back end to to streamline this process. Like I told you, we're working um, so hard to have a process where. Um, actually, before I get into that, the platform that we built, I don't know if you actually visited it. I don't know if you've visited it before, but we're trying to yeah. have a platform that is. Um, it's a self-publishing platform. We we want to have a platform where authors and readers can actually log in and do everything by themselves. Yeah, well, that's, that's what we're working on. And if you went on it now, you could see, you could publish a book today, and I could rent it tomorrow. I could, another person could translate it to to another language. Um, I could auction it. So it's 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 the sort of platform where we're trying to have everything streamlined and and have it done by by anybody without us having to get involved at all. So that was the idea before even AI came in. But um, yeah, at the moment we we we, we know. Um, it's a bit, um, it's a bit difficult. It's a bit, um, it's a bit of hard work to have to um, unbold um, authors um, um, the way we're doing it. But like I told you, we, we um, it sort of slowed down the process a bit. But um, also remember, we've not really um, um, advertised that much because we, we we sort of wanted to to develop the company before we sort of go out there and, and and advertise it. And that's the reason if you even went on YouTube today, you will never find any influencer talking about NFT books. Do you get it? You will yeah. never find anything 
on any media platform um, about callers, about um, what typical um, crypto projects do. We don't do that because we really wanted to 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 have the product working before we can do all of that. And obviously, because we run as a company, um, we registered obviously um, um, with the Australian government, and we're company based in Australia. If you picked up the phone to just a call, you speak to somebody. So um, we are trying to work around having a very, very sustainable, good platform um, before we can go all out and um, and advertise and have callers and have these sort of things. And we believe as well that might not be necessary as long as we have um, a working product, which we, we believe we have. And we, 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 we almost there. We, we're just twitching a few things here and there like we've spoken about. Um, adding a bit of AI to onboard everybody so easily and that sort of thing, but um, the platform works perfectly well at the moment. Then um, I was just wondering, then what's the hesitancy for not then pushing out more marketing? Um, like I said, it's it's because we, we the devs um, we, we sort of have like um, <laughs> devs that are very perfectionist. I mean, they they, mm. they don't want to do anything wrong. I mean, um, and I believe um, I believe in the crafts. Like, um, so they want to have a product that is seamless. If you know what I'm talking about, we want to have mm. a product that is as seamless as possible. We we look at um, at companies like Amazon. We look at these sort of companies that started from nothing. You understand? And they literally built a platform, and then they had all the masses running to it. Mm-hmm. To get- so we, we still pride ourselves on that. We, we, we believe once we have a very fine-tuned working product, we have the masses and we, we're almost there. So we, we we have not really advertised that much because we're still finishing the product. We, we, we're not trying to rush anything out, even though it's, it's a complete product at the moment, but we're fine-tuning a few things here and there. And if you go on a platform, every day there's something new that's, um, that's coming up. Like about a week ago, we we infused the auctioning, um, the auctioning um, features well. And mm-hmm. about 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 a month ago, um, we also infused a free library because there's, there's a lot of books out in the world that um, are not copyrighted anymore that people can actually access for free. Mm-hmm. So we we also have a future now. So every Every other two, three weeks a month, we have something new. We have something new. We have something new. So in the last two months, we have the free library now. Um, so there's, there's books that people can read absolutely for free. On library. Um, how, how big is that amount in terms of the the amount of books that you guys have available for people to read? How much is that? Um, You mean the free ones? Oh, the, yeah. Um, I think we're in the thousands at the moment. The free because there's so many free books at the moment, so we're in thousands of those. So there's thousands of books that actually people can log and read for free because these are not corporate anymore. Anybody can access them for free and read them. So there's thousands of those, um, thousands actually. And do you, because I'm wondering, is there like a limitation in regards to the categories that you guys allow? Is it like there's just certain categories that you guys just won't allow on the platform? No, at all. We, 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 we have everything. I mean, I what we're sort of working on as long as an author legally owns the book mm-hmm. you understand it, it could be anything it, it could literally be anything we, we 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 are trying to bridge publishing we're yeah. trying to uh, let, let me make it actually really easy we're trying to be to, to, to be the main point the center point for anything to to, to be read on written and that sort of thing so as, it, it could be a cartoon book. It could be um, it could be a series. It could be anything. Anything that is printed today. Yeah. Anything yeah, that I is get you. printed today, as long as you legally own it, it could be published on the platform. So we, we we're not um, limiting ourselves to anything at all. What, what's the uh, what's the revenue model? So the revenue model is quite easy. It's, it's absolutely easy. Um, let me break it down like this, basically. Let's say um, I write a book today, and um, I only wanted to ever have fifty thousand copies of that book. Because yeah. you know, it's not like in the world today, um, in the publishing world today. I could, um, I could publish a book today, and there'll be like 
and million counterfeit counterfeits to get yeah. it. But yeah. when it comes to a murder, an author decides how many books or copies he wants to ever exist. So yeah. once the author goes into a platform and chooses maybe 50,000 copies, so what yeah. that essentially means, and ultimately, there's always there's only going to be fifty thousand copies of that book on the what's on the internet, not even mm -hmm. the internet, like ever. Yeah. So what essentially what that means, the author and Mo, it might be little, it might be because I think um, at the moment you can read. Um, I'll just be sure you can actually rent a book for as little as one or two NFT books. But we are looking at the numbers because um, if it's only about fifty thousand copies. We're looking at, at the numbers basically. A lot of people, if a lot of people rent that book, and obviously if it gets um, translated into other languages as well, mm -hmm. the author earns money for life. Mm -hmm. And you're forgetting yeah. as well, um, we we taking away um, all the expenses that they have to go through, like with publishing and, and, and publishing companies and all that sort of thing. So the author earns all that money and it's for life as well. So that's sort of them, the, the streams of income that authors can obviously, um, how authors can, can earn money, I mean, for in, indefinitely for life. Okay. What about, because I did, I remember last time I spoke with Vikram, yeah. there's sort of this rent to earn model. Yeah, of course. I'm, I'm sorry, like I said to you as well, um, the, the futures are so many, sometimes I actually not forget about them. But yeah, you can rent a book, you can rent an on as well you get it mm -hmm. people can rent a book and once you rent it as well it's called rent to and you can add a bit as well you get it so yeah. you can either rent the book or you can buy the book to get it yeah. but the author still owns once you rent the book the author still takes a little cut got it it does not stop there at all you get it because once mm -hmm. once you say you buy the book obviously it becomes yours you own it but yeah. if you decide to rent it a little cart goes back to the author. Okay. So the author, the way, the way we operate, the author never stops earning at all. Yeah. No, yeah. it makes sense. It makes sense. And what about, if you guys thought about potential, I don't know if you have this already implemented or not, but I was just thinking in the top of my head about the potential possibility of a community voting sort of mechanism that says like, hey, the community votes together to see which books are the best books that people like the most and then those ones get like ranked up at the top of like the landing page or whatever you know like maybe something to incentivize then authors to be able to get more in transit visibility on the platform yeah we, we asked to be so we had to have something of the sort i think sometime last year for the best mm. um budget books i think it was called best studded books or um the most bought books i think we had something of the sort and um we had that run for about six months, I think I remember. There was something of that sort, yeah. Um, we, we will actually, I'm, I'm going to write that down. We'll actually think of that, something of the sort, to bring it back or something in the future. Yeah. We, we, I mean, we, we, we're still a community project still. We, we listen to everybody, and that's a very good idea. Perhaps we yeah. keep bringing up things. I mean, we, we'll keep working on things as long as it makes sense. Yeah, absolutely, man, absolutely. And would you, would you consider your project sort of like a, RWA real world asset type of product because isn't that what essentially you guys are doing? You're tokenizing real world assets on chain. Um, do you know what? <laughs> I'm glad you spoke about this, you know, because um I don't want to brag and say we were one of the people that actually start these friends, but when you actually think of it um in the right um perspective, we we've been doing this since 2021. Mm -hmm. Do you get it? Before it it became a thing of um, real-world assets, but it's actually what we've been doing for the last probably three, four years. So um, um, I'm glad you copped on that. That's, that's for a small of you, might say. <laughs> so, but yeah, yeah um, um, it's exactly what we've been doing for, I mean, for three years, and people just started doing that about a year ago, two years ago. So um, um, it's a smart one, and I talked to the devs to sort of probably maybe infuse that on the platform, maybe talk about it. But yeah, we, I mean, we, we, we started this trend and... Like I said, we, we, we're very silent, but um, we what we love. I mean, I love to call us what um, what's the word I think it's called called the silent majority. We, we're silent, but we we actually have things going and mm -hmm. um, proven actually as well. 
so it, it almost feels like you guys have more of that if if we build it they will come type of mentality is that sort of like the direction from the ceo's mindset that's how it's his vision um for one that, that's exactly what what i didn't want to say initially um because um, i think it's it's, it's always used uh, everybody sort of, sort of uses it oh build drum and they're gonna come on this whole thing but yeah that's exactly what that was the idea that was the vision of the day i mean and I'm, I'm, i mean i'm um, that's one thing i can say about life once you have a good product you will get the customers to get it when you, mm. group, you get the people and also it's because we we know what sort of world we're in we um unfortunately we build on blockchain and you know yourself blockchain crypto is all about pumps and dumps yeah <laughs> it's yeah, yeah, yeah. Pumps and dumps. you could have the most beautiful um project full of utility and it's going to be dumped on to get yeah. it so, um it's unfortunate but that's sort of the world we, 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 we live in and but obviously um with the ETF at the moment, we 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 believe um, people like would start seeing blockchain for what it is, and there probably won't be as many dumps. And obviously, with a project that we have, you really can't dump on us. If you um, if you go back and look on our charts, I know we went to about sixty million market cap, but that was on the initial launch when we all the way back and on Binance. And ever since then, you really can't say. Um, We've been dumped on at all. You get yeah. it's just, I would say it's just been a slow growth. Yeah, you get it yeah. because, like I said, we've never been out there. I mean, paying callers to to talk about us on YouTube and paying all those crypto influencers like you know yourself. Um, we prefer to do this sort of things like you and I talking and, and having AMAs that sort of make sense and reputable people and that sort of thing. And like I said. Um, the platform is obviously working perfectly well, but um, we we are working to even make it better. Yeah, yeah. There, there's no budget that has that we have at the moment, so we are trying to make it even better, and, and um, that's what we pride ourselves in for the last three years. In this sort of attention-based economy that we're in, do you sort of worry that your platform may not be able to attract the amount of users that you think it would, just because of the fact that you know attention kind of drives traffic nowadays but let me know i don't know what your thoughts are on that um yes and no um yes and no we we we, we know um like i said before about a minute or two ago we know the water we saw you know we know the market that we are operating on in so mm -hmm. the crypto market it's about it's about grab the attention of this project and then it's going to pamper the sort of thing Mm -hmm. So um, obviously we know the lifespan, people's lifespan when it comes to attention, while it's very very short. So we yeah. do understand all of that, but we still believe, we still believe, like we've always believed, um, we will, we will see the light at the end of the tunnel. And um, recently, um, we we actually, um, I don't know if you know, but. Um, we had very good negotiations with um with a fund in, a fund from denmark mm. um they've agreed to invest in nft books as a company we like i said we're not approaching any of these um funds or investors as a crypto project really because we are just built on blockchain but we are mm. a company so yeah and we secured about half a million dollars um for just about five percent oh congrats Completely. Yeah, of the company. So, and we, we, we are doing things like I said. We're doing things the right way, and um, we we received the contract from them last week, and the lawyers are sort of going through everything to work through swiftly and negotiate the terms and conditions, and that sort of thing that's suitable for us. And we'll try. We're going to try use um, these funds to obviously um, go to major exchanges now because we have built everything perfectly well and it's working. So we feel um, it was the right time to sort of get these funds and and go to 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 the exchanges. Obviously, and, um, we we use some of the money as well for marketing um, the mm -hmm. platform and, and keep on growing it. And of course, we will never stop developing new products on NFT books. So we still um, keep exploring and inventing and developing new products. Yeah. So yeah, um, 
that's one good thing with sort of like um achieved recently as well. So um we're very lucky to obviously achieve that as well. What was the name of the fund? Um it's an investment um fund from Denmark. Like I can't really give them for legal reasons because we've not really our lawyers are sort of going through um the the contracts that was sent back to us about a week and a half ago. So yeah. um, once the lawyers go through all of that and we can send that back, we will say the name openly. I mean, it's, it's an announcement channel in the Telegram group and um, the Twitter and everywhere. So, um, yeah, I just I just can't give it a name because we've not signed the documents to send them back. But yeah, we we got an offer of about half a mil um, for it's about percent stake in the company. That's amazing, man. Hey, bro, I'm just trolling. It's something that will not just challenge your perspective but also touch your heart and soul. It's a book that defies convention, blending art and literature into a thought-provoking masterpiece, a reflective piece of provocative art that tackles societal constructs from angles you've never considered. Hey bro, I'm just trolling delves into the very essence of our existence. It questions the technology that surrounds us, challenges our notions of beauty, stares unflinchingly into the eyes of death, and questions the boundaries of freedom. It scrutinized the educational system that molds our very future. This book is a journey, an exploration of shared human experience, and it's a work of art that refuses to be confined by tradition. It's a canvas painted with words, a melody of thought, and a testament to the power of creativity in a world dominated by algorithms and data. Visit moonboycapitalventures.com and get your hands on Hey Bro, I'm Just Trolling today. It's not just a book. It's a movement. Now let's jump back into the show. You know, I'm I'm, I'm proud of you guys. You know, <laughs> and yeah. it, you guys seem to be more of the grown ups kind of in this space, which is what I I like about you guys a lot. You know, I don't I don't know if you remember, but I was actually one of the first 100 authors to mint my book as an NFT on that platform. So um, I just I I saw what you guys are doing in the vision and trying to sort of bridge the underserved manuscripts with readers and. So I, I think that it's awesome. And also, like, I wanted to ask you, too, as well about the roadmap. Like, what do you guys have down the pipeline that you guys are working on? How does that look like? What, what's the future of NFT books look like? So um, with the roadmap, um, um, personally, um, I can't really speak for other devs, for other devs and NFT books, or NFT books but um, I think roadmap sort of, um, I think of the past. This is a personal opinion, by the way, because I feel like roadmaps sort of like um, hype up the community. And once you can't make the book, once you can't meet certain targets, um, you know, so crypto investors, they become very, very impatient about that. And they they start fighting, oh, you didn't do this in this month, you didn't do this in that month, you didn't achieve this and that. So it's sort of, it's sort of a thing of the past. I don't know if you've seen a lot of new projects now, they don't really believe in this whole roadmap thing anymore. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, but we have we, we have achieved everything that we were thought of when it comes to a roadmap. And to us, that was basically to have a working platform. And we have that. And like I've told you now, we've secured um, in our funds, we've secured the funds to go into exchanges and that sort of thing. So the only thing that we care about now is to keep improving the platform, to, to have yeah. something new on the platform, to, to make the platform more smoother, to make the platform more accessible, to, and that sort of thing. But one thing that I can say that we we believe we have to work on at one point, um, um, it's been a lot in it wasn't a roadmap. But I mean, from from the from from inception, we we always wanted to invent gadgets um, that can help poor people from third world countries to access an empty books platform. Because when when one when we started out, um, the main Dave, um, he um, he just envisioned to educate the world, to have everybody in the world, like, you know, knowledge is power, to so have everybody in the world be able to access knowledge, basically, to access books. And when you think of that and think of all the, um, the third world countries in the world where internet is still a thing of, um, of the elites. Yeah. I was in Africa about, about a year ago, about in September, and, and I will tell you, um, internet is, is a very expensive thing on some parts of Asia and that sort of thing. So uh, when we started out, they've had this idea of obviously at one point having um, a platform that can be accessed without the internet 
or with mm. minimal minimal internet. So that is one of the things that we sort of um, still looking at at one point to have a gadget that can solve access our platform without the need for any sort of internet at all. Um, it's a dream, but do you know what? We, we, we don't stop working and we, we, we know we've probably achieved at one point, but um, that's in the works at one point. But um, you can imagine how that will change the world, how we can know like kids in Africa and Cambodia and Asia and all these places where the internet is a really, really big thing. They can be able to read and research anything through our platform. That would be the end goal eventually. Yeah. Where, where were you? Where were you at in Africa specifically? Um, I, um, I was in Africa, but I, I, in a few countries. I went to Ghana. I was in Uganda. Um, yeah. My heritage is first back from Uganda, even though I'm from the UK. But um, I was in Uganda. I was in Kenya as well for some time as well. I was in Ethiopia. Um, I love traveling, man. I, I, I love that. Yeah. Stuff. I open my eyes all the time. Yeah, yeah, it makes absolute sense, man. And but do you think that because when you look at companies like world mumbo token or stargate for instance do you yeah. think that that will be as prevalent of an issue within the next five to ten years when you see the rapid pace of infrastructure that's being put up in these rural areas do i think it will be um a problem yeah do, I, do you think that access to internet will be as prevalent as it is right now because i think it's currently about 40 percent of the world is still unconnected 40 or 30 percent i think it's around 2 billion so i think yeah. it's about yeah yeah, yeah. um <coughs> sorry excuse me yeah um do you know what um also um but um before i answer that when you when you travel a lot and go to different countries and then when you usually go back you always see like a difference in something i mean the world is moving at a very very crazy pace so there's always developments all the time and um I believe, of course, um, I don't know, I, I really can't predict anything, but I believe in the next probably 10 years, the whole world might be able to access the internet. Yeah, I think so too. I think majority of the world, I mean, people are projecting by, by 2030, you know, you see these companies are aggressively, because they understand solving this problem, they're able to capture just even a few percent of the total addressable market, they're, they're going to be a billion dollar company. So you look at Stargate, exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, it just makes sense to do it, you know, and especially now that we're there's sort of these decentralized infrastructures that are coming out, you know, and like, again, also stuff like like Stargate World, World, Mo World Mobile Token is doing is also very interesting, too, as well. And their approach yeah, isn't it? beautiful stuff. There. Yeah. So I, I, I do believe that that won't be as much of an issue. So it wouldn't be something that you would have to 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 target as much, you know, because I think more people will have access to it. And then the more people that have access to it, the more competitive it gets, the more competitive it gets, the more competitive the prices get, the cheaper than the prices get. And then it becomes more affordable for a majority of the people. And uh, I think that's just kind of how how that's going to go. Um, you, you're absolutely right. I think that's what, like I said to you um, on the one side, it's something that we, we've not even started to invent at the moment. Mm -hmm. It's something that when we started about three years ago, we thought it would be a good idea, that there seemed to be a good idea for all these places in the world to have this sort of gadget. But um, you're right, I, I believe, um, you're right, I believe in the next probably, less, like you say, probably 2030, we want to have the internet ever in the world. Because even if you go to every poor country in the world now, people use smartphones. Yes. I know the internet is quite expensive in these places, but people literally run their lives in this sort of gadget. So, um, yep. like you said, it's just going to get cheaper and cheaper, and hopefully we won't have to invent this gadget. But um, we believe if there's a need for it, we'll obviously um, have it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, what's you guys' go-to market strategy currently? Um, we, we actually... I don't want to say we don't have one at the moment. Mm -hmm. Do you get it? We 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 have just decided we just want to have a beautiful working product. That's the first. That's the most important thing. And like I said, to you know, once we have, um, once we go to exchanges as well, mm. I think that's some sort of marketing as well. Do you get it? Yeah. But also, um, um, the dev. I mean, I'm not going to talk to the hate dev about that at all but um we 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 know in the back end we've always thought we've always wanted to get some sort of funding and mm -hmm. obviously um we're going to use a lot of the money from the funding from the funds that we've got 
to list and just go all our marketing. But also our marketing is not really going to be a usual um, hype from callers and and what you call it and um, YouTube channels and that sort of thing. We would mm-hmm. actually really go to 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 authors because we, without authors, then our platform is obsolete. Mm-hmm. You get it. Yeah. So we we are gonna go all out to get all the authors to onboard them and bring them into the platform. And like we're talking at Onset as well, once we sort of make this onboarding and vetting process a bit easier, probably with AI, it will be way easier as well. Because mm-hmm. really and truly, um, the authors can drive um, the marshes onto a platform. Onto a platform. Yeah, exactly. Like, hey, hey, I'm I'm waiting, man. I'm here. So, you know, I'm an author too. You know, so and exactly. I uh, yeah. active and participant. Even only be that. Obviously, we're, we're looking at um. Th- think about how many universities, how many colleagues in the world can make it to a platform. You understand? So we we gonna go to all of that. I mean, one of our CEC, uh, one of our advisors went to America about six months ago and spoke to a few universities there, and we have a few um. We've been like speaking to his world in in Asia and Africa and this sort of thing. So we've been doing things at the back, but we just wanted the right time to be able to have this. Because when you even think of it, if we can just have like all the universities in the world just to probably use our platform, all the um, lecturers could publish their um, pamphlets on our platform and this sort of thing. You can imagine how much marketing, how many, how many um, students we can just get for free to use our platform. Yeah. So that's a lot of that's a lot of traffic there as well. So um, we believe um, it's limitless. Well, what we have is limitless if we can achieve it the right way. How big is the team currently? So the team, um, the team at the moment is is about um, obviously there's, there's lawyers in the background. There's lawyers that, that obviously work for us and advisors, but the team is probably about eight people at the moment. Okay, that's good. Yeah, that's, that's good that's size. People, that's people like me and, and say um, people like Kapoor and, and people like um, Alan and Easton and also people and that you might know about or that you might go into a website and see because they're all dogs. But then mm. there's lawyers and devs in the back that sort of not dogs at all. But yeah, um, the people that you might put a face to and that sort of thing, it's probably about eight of us. What's the what's this backstory of how you got involved with the project? Like, was it did you meet Capo himself, or like, what, what's what's the deal with that? Do you know what? <laughs> yeah, that that, that uh, personally, um, I I was not part of the pe- of the of the would you call it them, um, the group that um, the in, the initial like, group, yeah, the initial group them from inception, but mm. I I must say. Um, do you know what? Um, um, it's the funny one actually. I was um, I was just looking at um, Coin Market Couple one, one day, and um, I, I, do you know what? I, I didn't really want to buy. You know what? When when NFTs were, were were big thing, yeah, I didn't really want to buy NFTs. I'm like that um, might crumble. One, I, I, I didn't really believe in it at all. But um, you know, <laughs> the funny thing, I, I, I read something today before I go into into online with you. Um, um, and apparently NFTs are down about 95%. People yeah. that bought NFTs like for say a meal or 100K, they're literally pretty much worth nothing now. So when this whole um, um, hype about NFTs came about, um, I, I was never really thought into it. So I, ne- I never like bought NFT at all, but one time um, when this um, when we when we launched, I was just on coin market cap, I see NFT books, I'm like, Hmm, that sounds interesting. Mm. What's that about? Unluckily, they had launched about two or three weeks before that, or a week. Mm. So um, mm-hmm. I went all in. I went into the Telegram group, and um, um, because I've got teaching background as well, I work in education as well. So I was mesmerized. I'm like, wow, what are they trying to do? They're not really all out there trying to NFT pictures and this sort of thing and that sort of thing. They're trying to actually solve an issue here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was mesmerized. I'm going to the Telegram, and, and I was in there talking all the time, um, hyping people. I did guys it's a very different project, this and that, and that sort of thing. And, and um, um, the CEO he liked my energy, and he goes, "Michael, um, 
um, um, he asked me to be part of the part of the modes. I started as a mode. Basically, I was just um, answering questions here and there. I was just mesmerized. And then mm -hmm. I think about three, four months later, um, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, the mockup for the for the for the platform was was introduced. I mean, that would be like uh, what do you call it? Simple terms. Then, then. The beta platform was introduced of how the platform is going to leak and what it's going to do and that sort of thing. I was I was infused in this project, man. I was like, that is a project that I want to be part of. So yeah, um, eventually, obviously, um, um, the CEOs and everybody um, they onboarded me. They thought um, um, I was I was really something to the project. So ever since then, about three years later, I've never looked back. Here we are. Wow, man, it's just, it's an amazing story, man. It's just uh, you just being perspicacious enough to be able to look and try to decipher. You know, I have a quick question because what do you think about why why it is that there's projects that are doing really, really good and trying to solve real problems and they're not getting as much hype and much attention and much price action as projects, you know, who basically don't really solve any problems at all so i i'm just curious what your thoughts are on that specifically do you know what um i honestly believe because um crypto has always been i don't think it started like that because when bitcoin came about and ethereum and all these sort of um blockchains initially um mm -hmm. it was called value but then we um and i'm not coming for any sort of name coins at all because i probably I have about one or two in the past, but when um when when meme coins came about like Doge and Shiba and all these um all these projects that had like thousands millions of followers, you understand? Mm -hmm. And obviously social media came in as well, where you can literally hype anything into anything. Yeah. Um. So I believe we 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 are in a world. First of all, first of all, even just put blockchain apart, we're in a world where if you're not hyped, you're nothing. Yeah, you get it. You you yeah. could have the best product today, but if you don't have like a big massive hype about it, it won't be anything at all. But um, I th the reason why I believe um really good products and projects in the world um are not really hyped and they're not I mean the prices they are earned is not really what they should be on, is because a lot of projects have support marketing, and marketing at the moment has become just about hype. It's not about quality at all you yeah. get it but um at the end of the day i still believe obviously with the etfs um with bitcoin now being illegal so so value i believe we are on the right route and i believe once the fusion if Ethereum can get um is etfs then we, we we're going to start seeing other blockchains like probably polygon or um or solana or whatever whatever i mean getting um recognized and obviously as well maybe companies like nft boots building yeah. on blockchain as well real companies you understand that yeah. registered like in in comp that paid vat and all this sort of thing so the more we have these sort of companies that actually solve real world problems um move to blockchain i believe that will solve the issue but um, i don't know if i answered you actually did i yeah yeah for sure and I don't know when you, you look at <clears throat> sorry go ahead I don't know what you think. What, what, what do you think the issue is about these real world, um, really good projects not having um, the right value in the crypto world? Yeah, I, I think the issue is with the crypto space is that people have been marketed to and branded to that you can come into crypto space and make a bunch of money in like a week. And so when you're looking and say you place your capital into one of these projects that's an actual legit project that's actually doing real things, and you see after like a few days it's not really moving the price action isn't moving you just dump it and you go to the to the next hype of where the thing that everyone is talking about right so that's then the marketing vehicles that people use in leverage to be able to extract attention for people to then pump their their tokens right mm -hmm. and um so this is why i think one of the biggest issues is in the crypto space is is that exactly and and i think a lot of people that are coming to the crypto space are not actually from the traditional market this is their first time investing so yep. they they have absolutely no idea about valuations, about EBITDA, about earnings reports, P&Ls. Um, 
and etc. I come from the traditional background because I was a stock investor before. So this is the type of stuff that I would be analyzing when looking at companies. And oh, sure. if yeah, so if you're if you're not someone that understands any of that stuff, you're simply going to come in, see what everyone's talking about and buy what everyone's talking about to try to make a quick two, three, four, five X and then move out and then move into something else. And that's, I think, the main issue. I think what's going on in the crypto space currently. And I don't know if that's going to change. <laughs> and and you, you also got to look what well, one more thing before before well, another thing too before before you go. Yeah. One other thing that people overlook is the fact that in crypto, it's trustless. So you have people from all around the world from different age groups. Okay. That's another thing. So they can be 14, 15 years old, uh -huh. you know, using using their their allowance money to get into the crypto market or to farm airdrops and then boom, they hit it big on one airdrop then they use that <laughs> capital to then start investing into meme coins. So you that's an issue too. But yeah, you can go ahead, go ahead. No, but you know what's funny? Um the other day I, I was one of those one of these um um uh, what do you call them Twitter spaces, right? And mm -hmm. I think one of the guys, I think he worked for, for Harmony. You know Harmony? Yes, the of course. Harmony, yeah. And I think he left um, the project. But he says um, the reason why he left is because um, of meme coins. And he goes, he reckons the day meme coins are banned, we shall see what crypto is about. Because hmm. because he he believes um he he was saying um meme coins literally have supported everything and and the other day I was on this screen and 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 I was saying everything new that came out out of every ten new projects nine were meme coins. <laughs> I'm not lying to you. About two days ago, honestly, if I, you know desk screen, right? Of course, of course. Out of Dex every Dex ten new coins, nine percent is meme coins. So there, there is people that obviously make money from meme coins and that, but there is people that really um have, have been fighting for the cause, like the guy that I spoke about that worked for Harmony for years ago, and he's just mad that obviously um um meme coins have supposed what they started because when you actually understand what Harmony is about, they're really really amazing projects. Yeah, I, I don't know why Harmony is not sitting on about two, three, four billion market cap. Yeah, you hype, They're amazing attention. You look at um, meme coins like Weave or whatever, whatever in a, in about a week they on five, three, four million market cap. So there is people, there is old school people like you on other old school devs that are really, really angry about meme coins and what they bring to the table, and they believe one point. They they really think once they can get bonds, then maybe we will have like real value for our projects. Yeah, you know, um, do you think that's a possibility, though, for them to be banned? <laughs> do you know what? It's, I'm, 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 I, I don't think so. But you know what? The way the world is moving at the moment, and obviously mm. with a lot of... Um... Okay, before I actually answer that, I, I believe at one point the whole blockchain um, world is going to be centralized. I believe it. Hmm. I Why? Believe it. I don't know, I believe governments are going to come in and, and they won't take this whole thing anymore. Like someone coming today, putting up a meme coin and and people becoming millionaires like in a day and people making... I, 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 I just believe, I just think it's going to crumble one point. But how are oh, they going to stop oh, it if, if it's trustless? That's the thing. That's the thing. I don't know. But uh, to me, I believe the whole ETF thing, I mean, obviously being mm -hmm. here and there, I believe more and more. Maybe it could be stopped in a way where people can't even cash out this money. Maybe. Because yeah. I don't know if you know about Europe now, how they brought this to me alone, like every wallet, you understand, has to, you, you, I mean, the government have to know who owns every wallet. Do you get it? Yeah. I don't know. I'm just thinking widely at the moment, but um, I don't know, but um, we'll see how it goes. But I believe meme coins are really the reason why really good projects are not seeing the war for the moment. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, it's interesting. I, I think every government has their own interest. So if you don't want to deal with the EU laws, if they're becoming more tyrant, then you can just go to Dubai or go to El Salvador. <laughs> That's true. That's what I'm saying. So this is why I don't think that because every one country is trash and another country's treasure. And I think if one country bans it or says this is not allowed or you can't on and off ramp or you have to dox all your wallets, then it's like, all right, fine, I'll just move over here. That's and true. now you've lost the liquidity, you know. So, but, but then, what, what do you think might solve this issue? Like, honestly, what do you think? Because I, I, I believe that there's a solution to everything, honestly. But I believe, um, 
I could name you 20 beautiful projects that I believe would be seen on crazy market caps, but like you said, they're not really seeing the value of who they should be because of yeah it's you know for for me i i think the can of worms has been open and because of that i i just don't think there's any going back you know when i look at what some countries are doing versus what other countries are doing i think that's always going to be a thing so if one country says hey we don't allow x well then people who are into x will just move their capital and their ideas over to the country that does champion x you know and so there's always going to be arbitrage and um that's that's the thing so I, I don't think there's any way to stop it and also because it's trustless so anyone mm -hmm. it's permissionless you can't mm -hmm. stop people and anyone from launching a token it's just not possible and i think it's too late to stop mm -hmm. and i think it just needs to let it they just need to let it do what, it, what it's doing you know because there's no way to stop it and what are you going to do when you find out that that person was a 15 year old or 16 year old in like iran or in syria or somewhere you know what i mean it's like <laughs> It's, it's crazy. It's, 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 it's crazy. It's, 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 very, it's very, actually, very, it's very interesting. Actually, it's very like, like you said. It's but you, you, I don't think it's, 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 it can be stopped. But I think governments might try to sort of come in and cut this. But it's, 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 it's unstoppable at the moment. It's unstoppable. It's unstoppable. Yeah, yeah. And think about it, bro. Like you can literally just be anonymous and just if you're smart enough, you can just launch your own blockchain. You can do all that anonymously. So. <laughs> How can someone stop you from launching a blockchain and then making maybe maybe making a bridge from your blockchain to Polygon and a bridge from you can do all that stuff permissionlessly. So I know, and, and it's, it's funny. It's funny because I, I look at my little nephews and, and nieces, and, and they doing things on the internal computer, things that I couldn't do. Yeah, years ago they're just brilliantly smart. It's just amazing what these kids can do, and mm -hmm. um, I'm thinking like <laughs> they they they. they younger generation at the moment um are going to be really unstoppable unstoppable yeah. and once they start of getting to the blockchain world as well it's, it's, it's a force that cannot be reckoned with at all yeah exactly it's it's just too it's too hard to stop it's too hard to control the the, the cat's out of the bag man so for me all they're doing right now and also if you look at it, it's getting the money printing none of this would have really be accelerated if it wasn't for the money printing so people are just tossing in their life savings because like, hey, man, my some people's currencies are inflating at 10 to 20 percent per month. <laughs> yeah, you look at uh, Turkey, you look at Argentina, Venezuela, like these or even uh, Nigeria. It's it's really bad there, too, as well. You know, so that, I, like I told you, I was, I was in Zimbabwe about the other year and you could you, I couldn't believe what one pound, British pound, how much notes I got out of their local money. It's ridiculous. When I was in Uganda, I could not believe how much just hundred pounds, how much cash I get in my hands. I'm like, what is going on here? And it just gets worse and worse every day. And you get this amount of money that can barely buy you anything. Yes, exactly. And uh, Zimbabwe, it's 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 bad all over, man. So for me, it's it's great that the system exists to where it's kind of for me like a checks and balance against them printing money and stealing people's wealth. That's how I, how I see it. Like, why should I not be able to put my money into an investment vehicle that's driving the value of what I put inside higher than and outpacing that rate of inflation and saving my purchasing power? And that's all people are trying to do. They're just trying. They're realizing that their their cash is, is trash. And there's a centralized entity that decides when they want to steal their wealth from you and how much of it they want to steal from you every single day. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, man, for me, crypto is and like you know that what? alternative. I, just you short. I think that's why a lot of governments are actually not like letting crypto be. And I think that's why we actually have the ETFs now, because I think the governments have realized they cannot continue printing money. It's just, it's just, it's not working. You understand? Yeah. And stuff with the, like Dubai, when you look at what Dubai is doing, when you look at what Portugal, Portugal has a thing that like, once you have your crypto, it's not, it's not taxes at all. German, yeah. once you have your crypto, and I think quality for a year, there's not taxes yeah. at all. Mm -hmm. Because the systems have not, have not worked. Yes. And honestly, if we can continue like this for another, like, even 15, 20 years, it's it's a bust bubble. It's, it's not working anymore. So, um, yeah. in a way, in a way, I feel like the future is bright. Absolutely, man. I, I think we'll we'll close it off there for now, man. Uh, I'm gonna let you go. Get, get, where can people find NFT books on the internet, man? Say that again. Where can people find NFT NFT books on the internet? Oh, um, obviously NFT books that come or NFT books that import up. 
you understand the platform and it's um we on three as well and it's a books um once you start NFT books, we're the only people there as well. And I mean, everything about us is literally on the internet. It's, um, it's, it's not hidden at all. And um, what was I going to say? And um, like I said, we're a company. If you, could, if you picked up the phone today and went to the website and picked up the phone um, and called a number, you speak somebody in Australia. You understand? Mm -hmm. we, we, we are always here. I mean, in Telegram, our Discord is not very, um, very, very live because but it's there, but it's not very, very live. But everything else, I mean, Twitter, Facebook, um, um, you can call us, you can you can email us, you can get on our platform. We, 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 we're we here. We, 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 we're now about to go in with all. Awesome, man. We'll leave it off there, man. I, I appreciate you for coming on. you have any closing thoughts before we go? Um, oh, listen, I appreciate, listen, first of all, we appreciate people like you and Richmond. We, we know you've been around for, for years. I know I've seen you about for probably about two years now. Yeah, and yeah. Richmond, yeah. And, and you, you're always very welcoming and very, very positive. I, I really wish we had like people that are positive like you all over the internet, man, because the internet is a very, a very, very dark place and yeah. the investors are very, very vile and um, you, you wouldn't believe how many... Um, Threats we've got in as an FC books because we we, we 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 did not succumb to to go the crypto way of of of, of pumps and dams and getting corners and getting all this sort of thing. Mm -hmm. A lot of, a lot of the investors have really really been very very mad at us for not doing that. You understand? And it's funny because just before I wind up, like you get people that come in and say, "Oh, but she, but it was done this Doge Doge coin has done this. <laughs> done this. Why can you do this?" I'm like. Wow, so um, it's, it's 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 all a ride that we've enjoyed so much because we deal with everything, every people from every part of the world and every sort of mindset, and it's just it's just amazing. Like I said, one of the, the days the other day, it's it's, it's a beautiful world because we get to understand and see how people think together, yeah. and then we have people like you and people like um, different people that have different perspectives and perceptions in life, and it's just a beautiful thing. But yeah, closing remarks. Um, we really appreciate, obviously, people like you that um, give us the day and light and a few minutes to, to understand us and what we're trying to bring to the table and what we're trying to do. And we get to have a human conversation with you without, without feeling a certain way. But um, we, 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 we only can hope for the best. I mean, we invested three years of our lives. Um, the days have worked so hard to to have a platform like what we have then not nobody has what we have you could go and look on the internet and, and all over the blockchain nobody has what we have and um we, we can only hope for the best now that we actually have um some fans um to go and list us everywhere we'll we, we'll, we'll keep developing we'll keep exploring we'll keep inventing as much as we can and um if you ever want to speak to us again it could be tomorrow or any other day we will always be here Appreciate you, Michael, man. No problem at all. Sorry, I was, I was not on, on video today, but next time I will be. <laughs> all good, all good, man. No worries, man. So this concludes then this episode of the Mooncast, man, and peace.